stubborn. If you hadn't run through the mud, this wouldn't be necessary. I've told you so many times, haven't I? And you never listen. But you know very well you can't come inside like that. I won't have you dragging mud into my stable. No, that won't do at all. What if we have a guest today, hmm? Then one would... Oh, <laughs> hello there. I'm... I'm sorry, you startled me. I was just, um... Oh, well, this pup has a bad habit of running through the muck. Even when I've told her a thousand times not to. It's not all her fault, though. She's the right bloodhound. She gets a whiff of anything interesting enough and all she'll go wherever it leads. The problem is she often returns quite filthy, and I don't want her trying to sneak her way inside the stable proper and track her muddy little paw prints all over the place. Especially if we have a guest. Oh, oh my goodness. A guest, yes. I'm so sorry. I've just been prattling on. Are you here to make use of the stable? Yes, yes, of course. Were you waiting long out front? Good, good. I, I apologize about any wait at all. I should have been there to greet you. I'm the only one here at the moment, but I'll get you taken care of properly. Is your horse out front? Wonderful. Let's head back round. Oh, what a lovely horse. My, my. May I? Oh, hello there, gorgeous. Aren't you a sweet one? Would you like an apple? No, oh, you really like that, don't you? Well, you're gonna love it here, don't you worry. We have more apples and carrots than you can possibly eat. Traveler, if you'd like, why don't you go ahead and have a seat inside? And I'll go ahead and take your noble steed here to the paddock and get their gear off so they can rest too. Oh no, of course not. I don't mind at all. It is my job, you know. It'll only take me a moment. I'm very quick. So, just make yourself at home, and I'll be right back. All right, Traveler. Thank you for waiting. Your horse is all settled round back. Plenty of hay and fresh water. And I left a few apples and carrots back there as a treat. Going right in the garden out back. Now I suppose we ought to get to the paperwork side of things. The Stable Association is quite a stickler with the records. Not that I mind. Oh no, Traveler, you sit right there and rest yourself. I'll bring the book over to you. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. It's no trouble at all. As you can tell, you're the only one here. And to be honest, you probably will be. It'll likely just be you and me here tonight, Traveler. In fact, I'd bet my dinner on it. We don't get a lot of folks out this way, so... There's no need to be quite as formal as there is in the busier stables. But don't worry, I won't hassle you, I promise. Alright, here we are. This is the Stable Association's registration list. Now, are you already registered with the Association? I figured so. You have the look of a seasoned traveler. 
Now, about how long ago did you become a member? It's okay if you don't remember exactly. We don't need exact dates, just a general time frame will do. As long as it wasn't within the last maybe half year or so, I'll have you listed. Three years, you say? Well, I'll definitely have you in here then. What's your name, Joe? No, oh, that's a nice thing. Okay, let's turn back here. Through the previous years. Hmm? Uh, well, that just has to do more with logistics than anything else. About every quarter, each stable sends out updated records to the association at they make a compiled list and have one sent out to every staple. Once we receive it, we make updates in the big book here. Now, since Wayfarer Stable, often referred to as Wayfar Stable, is in fact way far out here, we don't get deliveries as often as those in Hyrule proper. That includes most mail. Going in or going out. Luckily, for the other stables, our outgoing records are usually extremely minimal. A few pages at most. Incoming records are quite the stack, but I don't mind it. We are usually so very quiet here, so it's nice to have something to do. Overall, the stable association is pretty good with their record keeping. Speaking of, there you are, right? There. Looks like I updated your records about three months ago. Mm-hmm. It's almost time for the new list to arrive. But it'll probably be a couple more weeks until I get it. However, for someone who seems as well-traveled as yourself, I'm sure you've had a few more visits with us since then. Would I be correct? I thought as much. Do you have your stable pass with you? Ah, oh, excellent. Very good. May I see that, please? Thank you. My, you have quite a few pony points saved up. Very good, very good. The pony points are a relatively new system, and so are these personal booklets we give out now. But the stables have only been getting busier over the years, and with a lot of repeat visitors. So it's a nice way to be able to give something back to them. <laughs> yes, well, most other stables are getting busier, that is. We've always been rather quiet. Most of the border stables are. Oh, yes, there are three, actually. We all stand as a sort of end-of-the-line waypoint. We're each situated at the very end of the road, and there's not much beyond but great wilderness. It is quite the journey, and one only well-experienced travelers make. But if you keep going, you'll spend a few months in deep wilderness. But eventually, you'll reach... somewhere else. Of course, I cannot attest to anything personally. I've just heard the stories. And even those are few and far between. But some people are just the adventurous type. The desire to know. It just lives in their blood. However, I do know that there are a few secluded villages deep in the wilderness. I'm from one such place myself. Are you surprised by that? Well, those places aren't usually on any maps. Not that I've seen anyway, and I'm sure there are some places that even I don't know about. But I do have maps here that help guide you to the areas that I do know. Make 
make no mistake, though the journeys are still long and hard. But you already come all this way, so I'm sure there's something you're after. Even if it's only a good story. I'm sure that one day Hyrule's official exploration teams will conduct a survey of the wilderness. But I imagine that day will be pretty far off. They're a bit busy nowadays with, well, everything that's going on. When that day comes, I'm sure this stable will serve as a very useful outpost for them. But until such time, it's just the adventurers like you who come through now and then. Anyway, let's finish up before we get carried away in conversation. My fault, really. I am woefully unaccustomed to company. Now, this book here is our stable's record book. You can see it is quite small in comparison. Let me just get your name down. Can you spell your last name for me? Lovely. And how long are you planning on staying with us? Three nights. How wonderful. I'm very happy to have you. Now, a bed here is 20 rupees per night, so that would be 60 rupees. I do see that you have enough pony points for a sleepover pass, which would give you a free night. Would you like to use it? Excellent. Just so you're aware, using the pass won't get you a pony point for the night. Those you only get on paid nights. Okay, perfect. I figured you probably already knew that, but I just have to. So, we will use your ticket for tonight, and your balance will be 40 rupees. You can pay however you wish, pay by the day, or pay up front. Whatever you're most comfortable with is fine by me. You aren't exactly competing to reserve a bed here. You'd like to go ahead and pay up front. Wonderful. Then in that case, I will go ahead and award you two bunny points. Which I will make a note of in the ledger. And I will also stamp in your booklet. Very nice. Let me clear all of these out of the way and get them back behind the counter. I'm sure I don't need to go over any stable etiquette with you. I am technically supposed to mention a few things, but it almost feels like an insult to repeat to you something that I'm sure you're well aware of by now. So I will just give you a heads up on more stable specific practices around here. But first, which bed do you think you'll be sleeping in? You have your pick, traveler. I promise they're all comfortable. We don't charge based on how comfortable. That's stable specific practice number one. Well, myself and the previous stable masters maintained and built these beds ourselves. As you can imagine, there's not a terrible amount to do around here, so any project we throw ourselves into, we really give it our all. Plus, they don't get used all that often, so they haven't flattened. But I do stuff them with new wool every spring. So if anything, they only get more cozy with time. But each bed has its own trunk with its own lock, so whichever one you pick, I'll give you a key so you can stow your gear. <laughs> Don't worry though, we've never had any incident of theft here. How long? Oh, I've been here maybe 
gosh, over ten years now. I've been running the place for the past four, though. I was brought here many years ago when I was very young by the stable master. He taught me everything I know. How to run the place, how to care for horses, how to repair anything that breaks, because there will always be something that breaks. How to work the farm. Oh, yes, he built that small cabin out back. We're so isolated here that we need to be pretty self-reliant, so developed into a bit of a homestead over the years. Nothing major, but enough to take care of ourselves and any guests who wander by. Speaking of things that break, however, I can't help but notice your cloak has a few tears. I'd be happy to fix it for you. Oh, it would be no trouble at all. I truly mean it. I'd be quite glad to do it. No, no, no charge, of course. Yes, I'm quite certain. If you feel compelled to pay me in anything, let it be your company. Now, let me see to it. Hmm. <sighs> Snagged it good, huh? Thornbush. Hmm, well, that will do it. Not to worry, I'll have it fixed up in a jiffy. Don't you fret. Just take some time and relax. Technically, yes. I'm the only one who works here. The old stable master is no longer with us, and I expect we won't see each other again in this lifetime. We occasionally have some folks who end up staying a while and helping out, but they usually move on after a time. The only other person who is here regularly, who you may or may not have seen on the road, is Enno. I would consider Enno an employee, but he adamantly denies it. Despite the fact that he does me a lot of favors, and I do at least attempt to compensate him for it. Enno is a Rito. A warrior. He says he was just a grunt, but if you ever see him in action, you may find that hard to believe. But he won't talk much about himself. If you do meet him, please don't be put off by his attitude. It's nothing personal, he is... Well, like he is, with everyone. Myself included. But he does do a lot around here. Did you encounter many monsters close by? Yeah, I thought not. You can thank Enno for that. He spends a lot of time patrolling and keeping them away from here. It used to be quite dangerous out here. And don't get me wrong, it still is not completely safe. But ever since Enna moved in, it's not nearly as bad as it used to be. For a while, it got almost unbearable. I thought about leaving. It was the worst it had ever been. And then, like an answer to my prayers, Enno showed up. He cleared things up pretty quickly. And I asked him when it calmed down if he would be moving on, and he said something to the effect of, Obviously not, you idiot. And he's been here ever since. That was... about two and a half years ago. We still get a few monsters who straggle around the area, but for the most part, they've learned to stay away. In that time, Anna was also taken to making deliveries between us and the mountain town. I'm sure you've passed through it on your way here. It's small, but it's on a trade route. A slow one, but a trade route all the same. 
Merchants don't come out this way, as you can imagine. So Eno has taken it on himself to fly out now and then. It's been incredible, honestly. He always brings back the most wonderful things. Spices, herbs, books. Once he brought back a golden feather. Apparently, it's quite fashionable for the ladies of the Rito tribe. Eno insists I should wear it, but I always fear too much to get it dirty from the outside world. In addition, I've been able to sell a few things to the merchants. Eno convinced me that they're quite interested in goods from the wilds, they call us. Apparently it's considered rather exotic because they're so rare. I usually have a good excess of wool in spring, so I do a lot of knitting. I was quite surprised at the sum Eno returned with when I sent him off with it. He takes a fund with him when he goes to trade, but I haven't managed to get him to accept a wage. Though, between you and me, I do set it aside for him in case he ever changes his mind. Or for the day he decides to fly back out into the world, he'll have it to take with him. But don't tell him. It's our little secret. Well, he's currently out on patrol right now. He will usually go for a few days at a time. He used to stay in the stable, but he's built himself a treehouse on the edge of the forest. Though he will almost certainly return here. Especially once he sees a new guest has arrived. Which reminds me, I should let you know. Behind the counter, there is a satchel of brightly green-colored herbs, and a mineral that smells faintly sour. Should ever there be an emergency and you need to call for help, ground that satchel and throw it in the fire outside. It will smoke heavy and vibrantly green. It's a signal for Eno, and he'll come back to help us. Oh, it works, I assure you. I've tested it. I was skeptical he'd be able to see it, so I tried it out. I didn't even put the whole thing on the fire, just sprinkled a bit. And it was like lightning how fast he returned. And he'd been quite a fair distance away. Oh, I got into some trouble for that. He really let me but he came. So, if any trouble occurs, you can count on it that he will again. I do not expect any trouble to occur, and there has not been any trouble in a very long time. But we are well isolated out here, and it gets very dark at night. Even for the most seasoned adventurer, it can be unsettling. No shame in it. Most never come this close to the edge of the wilds in their lifetime. It's comforting to know that there's others looking out for you. And don't you worry, Traveler, because I will most certainly be looking out for you. Speaking of which... Ta-da! All finished. That will serve you much better now. No need to thank me, Traveler. It was my pleasure to mend it for you, and an ever greater pleasure to chat. I appreciate you lending me an ear. I'd love to talk with you some more if you could spare tales of your adventures or places you've been. I've never ventured beyond the mountain town myself, so there's so much of the world I haven't seen. Truly? I am thrilled to hear that. Before we get into it, how about I make us some dinner? Oh yes, that's another stable-specific rule I have. 
everyone who comes here will eat, and they will eat well. There's nothing as pleasant as sharing a good meal with good company, and I'll be darned if I leave anyone under my roof wanting for either. In the meantime, you're welcome to lay down or wander the farm or the orchard. If you follow the path there round back, the one with the orange flowers, there's a hot spring and you're welcome to soak. I'll chime the bell for you when it's time to eat, so you can know to wander back and get a hot meal. If you have any questions or need anything at all, and I do mean anything, traveler, you just let me know. I will be more than happy to provide it for you. And thank you once again for choosing Wayfarer's Table. And I'll see you for supper. <laughs>